if that was like let's say number one or number two core requirements you know maybe gs1 was the first requirement number two is the stereo testing we would have been like okay <laughs> <laughs> That's expensive. We may need to backtrack. <laughs> What's up everybody? It's Alex and RJ here from Backyard Sprouts. And in today's video, we're going to be telling you guys about our experience with Whole Foods. That's coming up next. What's up everyone? So if you guys have been following us, you know that we are usually primarily selling to restaurants, chefs, and farmers markets. And we are on our way to developing and building our infrastructure to home deliveries, which we are super excited about. But obviously we want to open up our venture to all sorts of capital, right? So we were looking into groceries, yep. like um, if you're in the North Carolina region, we have what's called Harris Teeter, Food Lion, and obviously the big kahuna itself, Whole Foods. And the experience with Whole Foods was very, very interesting, it's very <laughs> exciting from the beginning, right from the get-go because how, how that happened was, you know, Alex, by happenstance, we were like, let's walk into Whole Foods. I dragged him in at like eight o'clock. <laughs> she did, and, I was, <laughs> and that was already after we filled out the official online yeah. Whole Foods application. I haven't heard anything back at that point. Correct, yeah. yeah, so we filled it out. It's been maybe a week. Obviously, it tells you that they get a lot of requests in and they may not, we may not hear from them. So what was funny was we were just getting out of a, a cooking class yep. with a couple friends and Whole Foods was right next door and we were packing up and Alex was like we should just walk into Whole Foods and I was super reluctant I was like mm, I don't know Alex we already submitted our, our application and so we just walked in anyways what's hilarious is we met this lady who was super super nice and she was talking to us and she was super interested and we're she was like yeah come come by again and I'll introduce you to our produce lead and bring samples. So we brought samples and that was a crazy experience yep. in itself. And it wasn't just a produce lead, it was his right, right hand person and other team members. And then we saw the little lady again and we thought she was a nobody until we found out she came in all dressed up she was like the general manager of yeah. the store. She's like, hey guys, nice seeing you again. We were like, what the? Yeah. So they were tasting our product and they were absolutely in love with it. And they're like, we're gonna drop the per the people right now for you guys. And we we're like, this is crazy, right? And so fast forward to us having to actually fill out their onboarding. Yeah, you did that. <laughs> I will say one thing with yep. us taking the samples in is don't forget we're working full time so RJ and I are trying to coordinate our lunch breaks so we can go over to this Whole Foods and give them the samples and yeah we were straight up expecting them to you know critique us give us some like eh, feedback and they tasted it the produce lead and a few other people and he was like oh yeah this is delicious I'm going with this <laughs> we're both we didn't pitch them we didn't do anything we just stood there and we're like here's our product sample it so it was just a surreal experience and yeah it was super cool to realize that this lady that I dragged him in to speak to at like eight nine o'clock at night was the general manager right but yeah so the vendor process filling out what are they called the barn the barn is what the vendors uh, the local vendors use to it's onboard. vendor portal yeah it's their portal and so you have to meet the core requirements so this whole process was an entire learning experience for Alex and myself we we're looking into the first part was literally from the get-go you need your GS1 barcode and I was like what's a GS1 barcode and how do you get it yeah. right so the first thing I do Google, Google right <laughs> so what is GS1 and and we start learning throughout this process and you know we paid was it $200 over that, I think. Uh, it was yeah. like to maybe 250 for 10 specific barcodes you get 10 unique barcodes and at, at this current rate in time we I think have 10 products yep. right so it's perfect and so I filled out the application we paid the $250 to generate ourselves barcodes and now we have universal barcodes all around we can sell it to any store and it'll be when they tag it it's unique to us and our products so it's actually super cool and then throughout the process we're answering questions and just learning along yeah. the way and mm -hmm. I mean what what other well things? there were certain things like when we took the samples and we had our labels on and you know they just commented like oh this will sell well on the shelf this will look nice on the shelf oh well you're definitely gonna want colored labels because colored labels sell better so all right 
how much does a colored label printer cost? How much does paper cost? And then it was, um, they mentioned, oh, certain people like to see this, they like to see that it's organic. All right, and that's how we actually got onto the CNG certification because we're like, well, we need to get a certification to put on our labels to show so people see it and they can see it's organic, they can see it's local. We also needed to discuss minimum order quantities, right? So from a supply chain point of view, what's our MOQ? <laughs> and what's our cost of Whole Foods going to be because they're going to be buying in bulk so obviously you need to discount it a bit because the customers coming into the store then Whole Foods is going to mark it up a certain percentage and then those customers are going to purchase it right well we can't sell it to them at such a discount that it's cheaper than the farmers market that we sell it because it's in the same area we might get similar customers but we can't jack it up so high that it's not profitable to Whole Foods and that um, Whole Foods can't sell it to their customers so I had to do some analysis of what they were currently, they did provide with what they were currently paying their current micro uh, green supplier. Which helped because it gave us a baseline. And I'm not going to like try to <laughs> throw it under, but their stuff was trash, okay? <laughs> so I'm throwing them under. <laughs> but uh, this did help give us a baseline. And you know, we just wrote to them, we were like, listen, this is what we can do. This is what we can offer you. And we just believe that we have a far superior quality product and we are local. This other person was not necessarily local yeah, they're in a South few Carolina. hours away. Yeah. South Carolina and we're in North Carolina. Yeah. I live ten minutes from the Soul Foods. So super local. So that was part of the thing we had to do. You had to go through and look at how items were gonna look on the barcode, right? And descriptions. Yeah, they have a very they have a very tight process and how your barcodes need to look like and what information is on there what yeah. country it's from the date the harvest date and they have like samples for you to copy and um, that way you know how your barcode needs to look like so they were you know it's understandable that it is a very tight process oh I also had to come up with a food safety handling process and a recall process. <laughs> yep, that was so, all Alex. <laughs> yep, so we had to come up with a process if you know something happens or for some reason we need to recall, recall. our products, this is the steps we would go through, are we reimbursing Whole Foods, how are we getting all that product back, batch identifying, right? So I did a lot of like reading, you know, in my free time at work <laughs> <laughs> on how recall processes work and standard food safety operating procedures. So. Uh, it was definitely a lot of research on our end. Yeah, and, and like we said, it is during this process from start to finish, every single core requirement we ran into, we had to stop and take a few days to research yeah. what it was about. It, it wasn't just, hey, do you want to sell the Whole Foods? Yes. Do you want to sell this product? Yes. No, it was very, very detailed. Rigorous, yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't information that we knew from the get-go, right? It was something that we definitely had to research and teach ourselves and learn and it was just a crazy process so it can be easy to get discouraged I would say yeah but yeah don't. <laughs> yeah there were there were times in there where we were just like wow are we even like moving forward yeah. I feel like we've been stuck in this core requirement for forever yeah. and there was one where they needed a uh, inspection yeah. right so that we we were at a halt for a while because we wanted to ask them if the CNG inspection counted which it did which was super cool but nonetheless the CNG inspection didn't happen until like a week and a half later so at the, our process was completely halted yeah. and stopped for about a week and a half because we couldn't meet that core requirement yeah so we will yeah go ahead no the sad part yeah so just letting you guys know we got to the very end so let's Literally say last step I yeah think. if you were if you were completing the whole foods core requirements and you had a percentage of how far you guys got completed we were at like 98 percent. we yep. had like one or two core requirements left and we were done we were, we're in getting there. so excited we're like oh my god we're, we're almost, almost done with this cmg there. certified got the inspection done and our the person who's sponsoring us at the local whole foods is super cool and has been really uh, supportive of us through the whole process. Yeah, but unfortunately, and and I really wish that they put this requirement in the beginning. Yeah. But we got this far. We put in the time, the research, the money on projecting what we would be like when we sign on Whole Foods and partner with Whole Foods. Like Alex said, the color printer, the GS1 mm -hmm. barcodes. I mean, we were dropping money like crazy and yeah. then we were also about to um, expand our um, our coolers we were about to order another fridge because yeah. you know so all that a couple all, of thousand there yeah all that only to get to a part mm -hmm. in the core requirement at the very end about what we call listeria testing yep 
And I will let Alex talk about the list that you're testing because she definitely dug much deeper at, at this time, <clears throat> at this point in this phase. There was a lot going on in my brain, and I was like, Alex, my brain is melting. Please take over the Listeria <laughs> <laughs> like research. Yep. So I'll let you guys do your own Googling of Listeria, but basically you can get sick from certain products, and it can be um, a cause from the environment, right? So whatever, touching like a table, greens touching a table, touching uh, soil, something that's infected with Listeria, and then someone eats it and they get sick. Happens a lot with sprouts, can commonly have this happen to them. Microgreens are very low risk because they're grown above the soil. So to run my research, if any of you are scientists and disagree, feel free to let us know, <laughs> okay? So what happened was there's different ways you can test. You can have at-home test kits where you just swab a surface and they give you a yes or a no. And usually a lot of farms have these test kits. And then you have a more professional swabbing where you swab the environment and then send it off to a lab. And then they give you like a detailed breakdown of all of whatever germs are on your surface. And so, in this research, I found out that an at-home test kit, now mind you, because RJ and I are at separate locations, it was going to cost us almost $2,000 to get the equipment we need to have at-home test kits because they wanted 10 swabs a month at each location, <laughs> so 20 for us, and they wanted background detail swabs of previous testing, which we did not have, and we're not even sure if that was going to put a hard stop on us. Yeah. But then I had to try to research. I found a lab that we might be able to send stuff off, and we are going to just test on our own slowly to, like, cover ourselves and make sure we're taking care of all of those loose ends, even though we are very careful about sanitation and making sure everything is clean and we have processes to do that. I think for insurance and um, covering our own safety net, it's mm -hmm. good to have. But it was just not affordable for what Whole Foods projected to buy from us, at least starting out, and yeah. their quantities that they were projecting, it would have hardly even covered the amount of money we'd be spending in Listeria testing for them in return. Yeah, because, well, each swab was six bucks. Yeah, plus you have to buy an incubator because somehow <laughs> the swabs can't sit for long periods of time, and if they get in different temperatures, then it can affect them, and also these swabs wouldn't be covered, like if the FDA decided to come in and inspect us, we would need those professional swabs done at the labs to make sure that we meet the FDA regulations, right? So it was just really, I feel like, disappointing. <laughs> yeah, it was very discouraging because, you know, Alex mm -hmm. looked into one machine and one machine was like, a, what, 700 plus dollars for yeah. one. And unfortunately, we were looking, we were like, oh, can we just get one? And that, like Alex said, we can't just get one because you have to swab it and almost what, test it right away. Yeah, immediately put it in like an incubator. Yeah, so I, I can't just swab my stuff and like drive over to Alex's because then the temperatures would have changed and my readings would be mm -hmm. different from Alex's. Yeah. There's that chance, right? A science. You can get false positives and false negatives and you just can't risk that when you're dealing with people's health. Yeah, and so in order to absolutely get by it, we had to have already from the get-go ordered two of these devices. At over $700, that's already, like Alex said, is already, we're looking at $1,500 plus the swabs. I mean, it's... It was, plus the professional lab testing. Yeah, so it was very discouraging and it sucked hardcore that it was at the end, right? If they had told us if that was like, let's say, number one or number two core requirements, you know, maybe GS1 was the first requirement, number two is Listeria testing. We would have been like, okay, that's expensive, we may need to backtrack, right? But the fact that it was at the end is the most discouraging part, so we Oh wait, we didn't tell you the best part. When well, RJ the asked the email and they said we had a week to get them the Listeria. Oh, yeah, they yeah. gave us a week yeah, to give their them. Their onboarding team, you know, the, the actual people at the store Super yeah, awesome. They're awesome. Super awesome. Fantastic. Nothing love bad them. to say. We love them. Love Corporate? them so much. <laughs> but their onboarding team, yeah. because Not they're helpful. so disconnected yeah. from what we're actually doing, they they just have a checklist in front of them, right? So they're like, oh, another local vendor. Um, yeah, you need this done by a week. And yeah. we were like, we're looking at the Listeria testing, and they're like, we need three months of backtrack uh, <laughs> research testing, yeah. uh, testing. And we were like, what? How? The, that's not what yeah, we're like, this isn't possible. We kept asking. I was like, how? Because there's our local Whole Foods has all these other local vendors in the store. And we're like, well, you know, how, who are those vendors using? Who are our other local suppliers using? Who are they going to? And they're just like, oh, this is what I found on Google. I'm like, I found them too on Google, <laughs> but I don't know what I'm doing. I need some guidance. Yeah, so it was very tough for us to really... Um, it was a hard pill to swallow. It was a hard pill, and it was yeah. very hard for us to imagine that there are other vendors out there that are doing this, which yeah. is crazy, which they obviously have to be doing it, right? So, yeah. 
I don't know, their money, either they're pulling in way more than us at this stage, or they're just spending a fortune on getting that testing done. So we're still going to pursue it, like I said, um, one, just to cover ourselves, and two, obviously as we expand and we have more income, it may not be such a big deal to pay for those extra test kits because we'll have more expendable. But as you guys know, when you're early on in the business, you really need to be careful and analyze how you spend every single dollar. And for us right now, it just we're growing so much in other areas between our restaurants and like he said we have in a previous video we have probably 50 people signed up to do a home delivery program yeah. and to us that's just huge and that's where the market's going right now so yeah. um down the road maybe whole foods will be or other restaurant or other sorry stores might be something that we pursue again yeah. but we currently have decided to put it on hold <laughs> yeah and it was so sick right because if you're mm -hmm. in this industry Whole Foods is like the unicorn. Right. That's where people mm -hmm. want to be, and that's where they want their products being. What's well, known for shut. health food stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, and and that's where a lot of people want to be because you want to represent your product in a Whole Foods, and so getting into mm -hmm. it this early on, like, this is crazy, right? Yeah. But it is not feasible for us right now, unfortunately, and that sucks hardcore. We've been trying to get a hold um, of them but they are also super slammed at that yeah. store so we're going forward though <laughs> yeah we yeah. hit 2k a month in sales in five months so that's pretty freaking awesome and we're looking forward to growing yep we will retouch this conversation yeah. with whole foods definitely down the road like alex said you know once we've established a much let's say let's say we reach that five thousand yep. dollar goal <laughs> for us uh of consistent sales a month maybe it's possible right we can we can swallow the pill and spend two thousand of of it and get the equipment yep. and just start that process but right now in our current venture you know the worst thing that can actually happen to us is overextend yep. right so we're focusing on our home deliveries and at the same time we're trying to onboard whole foods which requires a lot of attention and we don't want either of those to we don't yep. want to drop the ball in any of those right yep. we want to focus on one thing at a time get good at it get that into autopilot mode and make sure we know what we're doing with the home deliveries and once we've got that down on pat then when we have the the capital and the time to learn another uh venture then we'll go down the whole foods route yep but so lesson learned here right yeah be flexible yeah. Be ready yeah. to be flexible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, no no time is really wasted. We learned a lot in oh, this yeah, process. We yeah. learned stereo testing and we learned a whole bunch of um, just a whole bunch of other stuff that, that is invaluable to our business. So it, it was a, a expensive learning curve, yeah. <laughs> an expensive yeah. lesson for us, but... It happens and we're positive about it. Yeah, we're I think positive that's what's good. We weren't like, oh, we should just give up. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll touch back on that but we're gonna focus on other ventures right now and we'll focus on our home deliveries because winter is coming yeah fall and winter and as you guys know if you're in this industry or niche farmers markets do have a shelf life they're only open till about fall but okay. if you are aware microgreens are grown indoors and they are grown year-round so we don't want to lose that connection with our um, with our followers and following and people and just letting them know that we can grow this and deliver this to your yep. doorstep whether it's winter or not so what's really cool and i just want to briefly touch this is a lot of the people at the farmers markets are getting used to incorporating microgreens in their weekly basis they're putting it yep. in all their foods i've been putting them in sandwiches i'm good i've been going really ham on the sandwiches and i've been just putting these microgreens thing yep. as as a replacer so a lot of them have already gotten used to incorporating the micros, which is super awesome, right? So we don't want them to be like, oh, you know, the farmer's market's done. We no longer have access to the micros until yeah. next spring. That's not the case. So that's why we're really pushing hard for the home deliveries so that we can continue to supply for them year round. Yeah. We hope you guys found that video useful. If you guys have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And as always, Alex and I are trying to build a community of like minds, so we'd absolutely love it if you guys hit that like and subscribe button so you guys get the latest on our urban farming adventure, and we will see you guys next time. What's up, everyone? So 